Well, this is how the studio looked in the early days, and this familiar face presented Grandstand for many years as the programme established itself as a permanent fixture on Saturday afternoons. He's still very much a part of BBC Sport today. It is, of course, David Coleman. And this is the moment they've been waiting for. Paul McCartney leading them off. George Harrison on the left. John Lennon at the back. Ringo Starr. Welcome back, boys. How did this reception here Thank compare you. with America? Oh, it was great. It was as, every bit as good. It, it was, was better. 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 It was better. better. <laughs> I must say, even oh, you boys sorry. look surprised that you came down the Oak Grove steps. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't you be? It's so early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we thought, you know, the only thing we Pardon? Well, we haven't got up. We haven't been to bed yet. Don't forget, Rapolo Seagrave. Don't forget, it's four o'clock in the States. Now. The, the Spivs have actually got lots of tickets, have they? Well, I don't know, you know, they, they're not making out that they haven't, but I think they have early. Fine, well, there you are. That's a really wonderful present there for you. Two £4 stand tickets. If I give you a letter from the Cheltenham man, perhaps you'd like to write to him and thank him. OK, I hope you enjoy the match, and no doubt about Leicester City winning, no? No, the fans win. <laughs> OK, well, there you are. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Hope you enjoy it. Off you go. And what, what price Liverpool for the cup, then? Oh, they definitely got it. Oh, oh, in the semi. Oh, yeah. oh didn't he? We yeah, I've been away, you see. I've been to America. They really don't tell you anything, do they? They don't, we don't tell them anything. Keep me in the dark. Actually, I, 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 so now, I tell you what a great honour it is to have you with us in the grandstand studio. Well, thank you very much. Of course, Keith Piggott is Lester Piggott's father. In fact, here he is. Well done, Mr Piggott. <laughs> Did you really expect Arla to run so well? Would you like uh, to pass the camera? Uh, well, I did, rather, yeah. You did? You're a bit uh, worried about the horse in the background? Uh, yeah, probably. He wants a bit of looking out. Yeah, yeah, but, you, you, uh, get him just to get on with it, and he can hold him yeah. while he's talking to you. Fine. Yeah. All right. Well, this is the winning trophy, in I fact, is it? Yeah. You had the winning trophy. Oh, thank you very much. I, I congratulate you on, on, the, uh, on the wonderful winning. Come on, shake hands with it, and, and, and officially. Lovely. There we are. Huh? Now you've got it. Now you drink a lot out of it. Now you've got on with it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the noise here. I'll tell you about the noise in just a moment. And some don't news. forget to ask me about his shoes. Ah, yes. Well, that's Cliff Morgan telling me uh, not to forget to ask someone behind me uh, about his shirt. Well, I'll just tell you about that in a moment or so. What is all going on here? Well, did you come from behind my back? <laughs> I mean, all the best things in television you never see at home. Peter Hussey, our studio manager, is trying to help me because I can't hear on the headphone what the producer's saying, which is desperate. Anyway, I got out of we're going to Highbury. I know. Thanks very much. Now, Nash in the dark kit is clearly the winner. If we can move them through now and check their placings. I'm sorry. sorry about that, but as you might have gathered, we've not used that machine very often, and we need a bit of practice. Now, you, uh, of course, you're going out of the sporting program this afternoon in Grandstand. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'd like to hear what you thought about Mr. Clay. Very tall, very... No, he's a big lad. <laughs> he's, a, he's a great laugh, you know, more than anything. He's, he's a, a big lad. lad. He's going to get Sonny listening in three. That's he's what he said. That's what he so said. said. I don't think he will, though. I hear you were creeping up to Harry Carpenter in the training camp, Paul, and uh, yeah. whispering things to him. Yeah, well, he said the, the only thing was, he asked me who was going to win, and, you know, I would have told him out that I thought Liston was going to so win, but coward. It was, I'm a coward, <laughs> and it was in Clay's <laughs> camp, he there's all these fellas sitting around, he says, Liston, I have to whisper you. Yeah. Liston, job. do you want <laughs> to know <laughs> a secret? <laughs> 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 well, those are the outside broadcasts, and now, uh, so that you've had a taste of all that's to come this afternoon, here's a little of the theme music from the film we're showing at about 3.30, a film often described as the greatest western ever made, High Noon. Well, movie critic and <laughs> sports presenter, David. Uh, so many memories there. I'm sure many more we want to talk about. But first of all, you're in studio so much today. How has it changed from the one you sit in now as it was at the 60s? Well, not much has changed behind me, has it? <laughs> uh, it's the guy that's changed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but it has. I mean, tell us a, a few of those stories. I mean, the Beatles on Grandstand, how did that come about? Um, we went to meet them at the airport uh, because we used to do news stories. We were all news journalists as well as sports journalists. Um, we did the uh, splashdown of the American astronauts and all sorts of things. Um, news events that happened on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. I think that's how it came about. <laughs> but I'll never forget Paul McCartney coming in. He said, what are you doing here? I said... <laughs> I'm doing grandstand. Are you ready? He said, oh, we must have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Thought that highly of it back then. T tell us some of those stories. High noon we saw there. Now, what was that linking to a, a movie? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> We've probably got nothing else to put in. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the middle of the night, actually, with the World Heavyweight Boxing Championship going on and being delayed. 
Okay, now tell us some of those stories. We saw there the Duke of Edinburgh appeared on grandstand. Oh, they as nearly well. didn't let me in that day. I knew the commissioner, but I hadn't got the right person. He wouldn't let me in. <laughs> I nearly missed the programme, honestly. You yeah. you. But mind you, I nearly missed a, missed a few because we're always late. You. Always late, yes. Well, you late. never are now. Uh, how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, we worked together a few times. I didn't... No, but in, the, in those days, it was uh, so much off the cuff, you wouldn't believe it, because there was no videotape. There was no instant escape area at all. Videotape came two, three years later, mm -hmm. and uh, everything you had to go to was live. Mm. And I remember one day a horse here at Ascot escaped, and the ASA championships were on. Olympic trials, I think it was. And we had to keep the swimmers on the blocks for 20 minutes, no. waiting while this horse was caught. <laughs> uh, it never started, of course, but it was dangerous. <laughs> um, but uh, everything had to be off the cuff. Mm. And the only escape route was uh, through news. Well, you've worked with a number of uh, producers, editors. I mean, how has Talkback changed over the years <laughs> don't since you talk first... to me. That's a <laughs> naughty question, that oh, is. I know. <laughs> I don't believe... Well, I don't... we used to have a special suit built. Uh, Peter had the first two. I did... Uh, I wasn't allowed out of the Birmingham newsroom at the time. So Peter did the first two, and he had a special suit, so I had to have one as well. And uh, because the equipment was so heavy and unsophisticated, um, it was radio-fed, and we had to have special pockets made to hide all this stuff. But uh, unfortunately, I don't know if this story is true, but uh, I suspect it is, um, somebody started picking up the talk back in Shepherd's Bush, oh, no. and, and the language from the gallery was appalling. <laughs> they complained to the BBC about it. <laughs> so the story goes. Uh, so I, I had to go into a line-fed thing. Um, so it restricted my movement a, a bit in the studio. Mm -hmm. But uh, in those days, the racing results were chalked up on a board. So uh, Brian Cowgill had this thing about keeping me on the move. Every shot had to be different. So I used to do links into racing halfway up a ladder, <laughs> leading to this great big results board. I also did one from the tea trolley queue uh, <laughs> and th things like that. Um, there's one or two incidents actually which I don't talk about. <laughs> Maybe not. What about the <laughs> early days of the video printer because that's sort of where it started. Yeah well I, I saw the second program. I was allowed out of the newsroom to watch the second program in Shadow Peter and I thought that the, the, it was the teleprinter then mm -hmm. and it was a lot slower than it is now. And I was travelling down from Birmingham by train on a Friday afternoon, and I suddenly had this thought that I could fill in, because I've got a fairly good memory, a photographic memory, uh, you know, so many score draws or whatever, so many matches without a win, or even juggle the league tables. So I tried to memorise it, <laughs> and it worked. And everybody was astonished, absolutely astonished, that I could say that this happened, that happened. Um, but in fact, it was merely designed to cover the slowness of the teleprinter as it was then and fill space. So if we need some help later on, you'll be on hand. Have <laughs> <laughs> you memorised Don't you believe it, Barker. <laughs> and by the way, Blizzard, <laughs> everywhere <laughs> Sue goes, it either snows or rains. It's a lovely day here, though. Yeah, it was just spitting moment. with rain when I came in. <laughs> oh Sorry about yeah. that. I mean, you could change the whole of the Scottish uh, way of life. <laughs> they had no snow all winter till you went up there. <laughs> he winds me up all the time. Anyway, David, I'd love to talk forever, but we've got to move on. I'll let you enjoy the party anyway. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks, Sue.